All right, everybody, welcome back to another edition of the Leadership Blend TV show with your host, Ricardo D. Rice, and this is episode seven. Yes, everybody, this is episode seven. So we are steady rolling along right with all this great information. So as usual, we're going to do a quick recap of what we did in last week's episode. So in last week's episode, we went over the idea checklist. And what is that? It's like when you have an idea, how good is that idea? Are there questions that you can ask to solidify the validity of your idea? So here's a couple things we went over last week. So number one, does your idea solve other people's problems? Now, again, be mindful because we are talking about ministry. So when God gives you a ministry, it should solve other people's problems because that's what God does. He's just great like that. So second question, do a lot of people have this problem? Last week, I used the example of, I think, brother, we're going to say brother Tiberius. And he goes to uh, New Life Christian Church and God has given him a ministry for men. So he decides, hey, let me go have a conversation with the men in the congregation and let me see what some of the general problems are. So when he goes and has a conversation with the men's ministry, he discovers that a lot of them health is the biggest thing. So he sits down, he thinks about, well, what can I do to help fix the health problem amongst the men in the ministry? So what he comes up with is he says, you know what, let's do some health screenings. So he decides to do health screenings. So he discovered what the problem was. He identified the problem. And by identifying the problem, he can come up with solutions. So his solution was to start doing health, men's health screenings. Next, is are you passionate about the idea? I cannot stress this enough. Passion is the most important thing. Even when God gives you a vision, you have to have the passion to execute the vision. Because the next question is going to be, are you willing to commit five to ten years of your life to this passion? If you never tap into passion, you, I promise you, you're going to give out in the middle of those five to ten years, especially if we're talking about doing a nonprofit organization, which many people want to do. My first question with that is always, is this an issue that you are passionate about? In this particular scenario, Tiberius was very passionate about the men's ministry. In another example I used, it was a for-profit institution. It was the catch-up um, scenario. All right, so in this example, we have Tom. Tom has a son. So his son loves ketchup, but he doesn't like the color of ketchup. So if you blindfold his son, he'll eat ketchup because he loves ketchup. So Tom decided, okay, my son loves ketchup. He really won't eat anything without ketchup on it, but he doesn't like the red. So what can I do? So he identified the problem, which was red ketchup, because he figured if his son has this issue, other people also have this issue. So he did his market research and discovered that, yes, there are people who love ketchup, but they can't necessarily have the dye that's in red ketchup. So he identified the problem and his solution was, why don't I create ketchup that's in different colors? So the problem was identified and he offers up a solution. All right, so the next question would be, are others successfully doing something similar? So let's go sticking with the example of Tom and the ketchup. So he does his market research and he discovers that the person that's cornering the market is Heinz, which most people know Heinz ketchup. Personally, I'm using this example because I love ketchup. So because I love ketchup, most people like ketchup. So he discovers that Heinz uh, is cornering the market on ketchup. So upon doing further research, he looks to see how much money is Heinz actually bringing in, which the next question is going to be, does this market have too many competitors? Now let's switch back to the church example with Tiberius and the ministry. So Tiberius decides to look around his area, see how many other churches are in his area. He discovers that there's two other churches on the other side, on both sides of him, but one has a men's ministry that only meets on Thursday and the other has a men's ministry that only meets on Saturday. So he decides, okay, well, they're covering Friday and they're covering Saturday. There's still an open spot for me to do mine on Sunday. So just that fast, he identified his problem. He looked at his market and he discovered where there is an opening for him to actually come in with his product or his services. All right. So the last question is, uh, can I do something substantially different or better than others? In this scenario, we'll stick with the nonprofit scenario. In this scenario, he discovers that the Friday ministry, they talk about uh, men's issues, but it's not health. And then on the Saturday, when they go do stuff like go to soup kitchens and things of that magnitude. So him doing health screenings, there was an open field for it. So he has the ability to go full force in that particular scenario. And then the last question, can I build the business on my capital resources? Now, of course, we talk about ministry. So with him, he decided the best thing for him to do was to build a partnership with a hospital who was happy to come out, not only give money to the ministry, but come out and do the screenings for the ministry. So that's just a quick recap of the idea checklist. So again, does it solve problems? Do a lot of people have this problem? Are you passionate? Are you willing to commit five to 10 years to this? And can you do something else and make sure that your market does not have too many competitors?
All right, bye. So we're going to get to the big thing that everybody tries to avoid, social media. Yes, if you have a business, even if you have a ministry, social media should be your best friend. I know, I know, this is where generations start getting segmented. Because remember, you have your baby boomers, your Generation X, your Generation Y, your millennials, and actually now they're adding in Generation Z. It is a known fact that baby boomers do not like social media. So those are your ones who lived during World War I, World War II. Uh, Generation X and Generation Y typically fall in the middle. We don't typically mind it. It's not our favorite thing to do. We'll do it. And then you get your millennials who typically can breeze through it and don't even give it a second thought. So if you have a ministry or a organization and you have younger people in your organization, it would behoove you to uh, research them and give them the opportunity to take over your social media. Because again, these are the kids that were raised on social media so they actually understand the dynamics of each one. But today, I'm going to simplify social media for you. So we're gonna, I'm gonna explain to you what each one does and why it's important and vital to your organization or ministry. All right, so first, we have Facebook. Facebook is my personal favorite. Why? Because Facebook is like a big old family reunion. You can connect with people, you can uh, add people, you can join groups, all that good stuff. Now, my advisement would be, and let's start with ministry. So if you have a ministry, it is okay to have your personal page and a ministry page. It doesn't necessarily have to be one particular page. Case in point, I have my own personal Ricardo or Ricky Rice page, but then I also have a leadership blend page. So there are certain things that I don't put on my personal page that I would put on my business page and vice versa. Now, here's the dilemma. My personal page has 5,000 followers. My business page is newer, so it only has about two or 300 uh, people following it. But on my personal page, I don't do anything that would be deemed crazy. So I typically will use my personal page to do everything as it pertains to my business page. That's okay. Somebody asked me that the other day. Now, let's segue this to a ministry. If you are a ministry and you're a pastor or an evangelist or something at a magnitude, Facebook is good because you are allowed to do live videos. You can go live wherever you are. People can chime in. They can talk with you. Unlike some of the others that are up here, Facebook typically does not limit how long your live is. So case in point, when I do the radio show, the radio show is two hours. I can actually stream that for two hours. And when I'm done, I can go back and edit it and put, hey, this is episode two, episode three. These were the guests. If you want more information, you can click the link and it'll take you there. So Facebook is perfect for that. Facebook is also good with enlarging your circle. So if you want to add other ministers, you want to add other ministries, it's easy to do that with Facebook. So Facebook should really be your best friend. Now on a business page on Facebook, there are so many other elements that you can use. So case in point, if you have a book, which a lot of uh, ministers have books, which I advise you to do. Quick tidbit. For ministers and pastors, I know plenty of them say, oh, I need to write a book. The Lord has called me to write a book. That is great. You should write the book and put that under your LLC. Why? Because that's money that is accounted for solely to you. And this day and time, we get into this big debacle about tithes and offering and where it should be going. I always tell pastors the easiest thing to do is to start your LLC and allow everything that you do to go straight to that and let the church be the church. Now, rightfully so, that's a whole different discussion you want to have with your board and everything that you have as it pertains to your ministry. But it's just an idea for those that are uh, thinking about doing ministry at some point in time or thinking about being a pastor at some point in time. That's a thought. LLC for you. Let the ministry be the nonprofit. That was free. I just threw that in there. All right. So let's move on to let's do LinkedIn. LinkedIn is tricky. LinkedIn is the I call LinkedIn the professional Facebook. Everybody that is a professional should have a LinkedIn. Why? Because LinkedIn will help you build professional uh, connections. Facebook is good for more social. LinkedIn is good for more professional. Yes, even pastors, it's okay to have a LinkedIn because most of you guys probably do something outside of your ministry. So if you have a business or if you're trying to start a business, LinkedIn is perfect because it allows you to make connections that are professional. Also, other little things, other little tidbits about LinkedIn. With LinkedIn, you can look up a company, type in the name of that company, it will give you executives in that company. So let's say you're trying to create a partnership. Let's go back to the example of Tiberius in a church. So when he was trying to uh, make partnerships to do the health screenings, he typed in the name of the local hospital and it gave him executives that were on LinkedIn in that particular hospital. So he was able to reach out to them directly and add them as a friend and then send them a message and say, hey, we're looking for uh, some sponsors or we're looking for people to work with us to do these men's screening. So he was able to cut out the red tape using LinkedIn. 
Also, LinkedIn will also allow you to put up videos and pictures and all that good stuff. Now, unlike Facebook, LinkedIn is only going to give you a minute. So whatever you're going to do, it has to be done in that minute. Uh, but Facebook is more social. So again, I always go back to Facebook. You can tell I'm a little biased about Facebook, but Facebook has a lot of good qualities. But just remember, Facebook will allow you to stream for as long as you like, and LinkedIn will only give you a minute. All right? Next, Instagram. Okay, so pictures. Think about Instagram as the picture part of social media. You can write wording and all that stuff, but Instagram is typically pictures. So you definitely want to use Instagram to show what you're doing with your ministry. So if you're out in the streets feeding the hungry or you want to tape a couple of your services, Instagram is really good for that. If you want to take pictures when you guys are out feeding the hungry, then Instagram is really good for that. It's really all about the pictures. People typically are strolling through it just to look at pictures, and that's all I do. So for me, I use LinkedIn. I put up clips of the TV, show, the radio show. I put up pictures when I'm in the studio because I know that's what people are looking for. It's also good for flyers. A lot of ministry do flyers. You can cut up your flyer and put it on Instagram. So Instagram is good for those kinds of things. Twitter, whole other beast. So with Twitter, when you use Twitter, I went back to Twitter only because it's good for businesses. So case in point, I took a picture one day and uh, I had my nephew in my hands and I was trying to play around with to send a message to Express. So I took the picture with my nephew. I was all dressed up. I had on Express stuff and I tagged him in it and said, I think I look kind of cute. I should work. I should be an Express model or something to that extent. When I tagged them, they immediately responded and they sent me the sponsorship department's information. So Twitter is good for businesses if you're trying to reach them directly. So again, a quick recap, Facebook is social. Videos can go as long as you like. LinkedIn is professional. Videos can only go one minute. Instagram is all pictures, so all flyers, all clips are good for Instagram. And Twitter is good to reach out directly to businesses because most of the time they have people monitoring their Twitters and they're usually using their Twitters. media and each particular outlet so just to do a quick recap again Facebook social media it was like a social site LinkedIn professional site Twitter is more business oriented and Instagram is strictly really for pictures so again flyers small videos all that good stuff now IG has started what they call IGTV I didn't go over it because I'm not really a fan of it because with IGTV they only do vertical not horizontal that can create a problem, especially if there's a lot of people that are in your video, that can create a problem. So you can try IGTV, it's not really my thing. All the other ones will let you do horizontal. Well, they'll let you do either one. So if you put the camera this way or this way, it'll just, it's okay. All right, so let's go into what people do wrong with social media. Now, the biggest misconception is, that, oh, I can just start a social media and it'll be fine, I'll just start it one day and it'll be good. That is not how social media works. Social media is gonna require you to tell a story. And if you're going to be effective, that's the best way to do it. So what do I mean by telling a story? So, you know, I love examples because examples make everything easier. So let's use the example of, we'll stick with Tavares and the men's ministry. So Tavares decides that, actually, no, let's do a better example. We're going to start from scratch. So let's use the example of Joseph and Joseph has been called to start a church. So Joseph decides, hey, the Lord has called me to start a ministry and I've already got my business stuff. I found a building, all that good stuff. So now I have to compel the people to come into the building. So what Joseph does, he starts to tell his story. So he shows the building when he's looking for a building. So he'll do a live when he goes to look at buildings with the realtor. So he's in the building. He's like, hey, you guys, you know, the Lord has called me to a ministry. And I just want to show you guys some of the buildings we're looking at. That way people go, hey, Joseph's doing something. Because when you're on social media and your friends follow you, they can put on notifications so that whenever you go live, they'll get being to know, hey, Ricardo's live. So with Joseph, Joseph decides to show every time he goes to look at a new property for the church. So when he goes to the first property, he goes live, his friends get the being. He goes, hey, you guys, I'm looking at buildings. We're getting ready to launch the ministry. The ministry is going to be launched in about three months. He has, doesn't exactly have the date yet, but he says the ministry is going to be launched in three months. I just want to take you guys on the journey with me. So that's how you start to tell your story. 
So one, he takes the camera with him every time he goes to look at a new building. Number two, every time he goes to buy furniture, he shows everybody, hey, you guys, what do you think about the furniture I'm getting ready to buy? And then he inspires them to actually comment while he's going live. So when he's looking at furniture, he goes, hey, I'm looking at three different types of couches. I just want you guys to give me some input. Just drop your input at the bottom of the live. That way people are interacting. They feel vested because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Getting them to buy in, getting them vested in what you're trying to do with your business or your organization or your nonprofit. So let's switch to a nonprofit. Let's say you decide you want to start a nonprofit and you're getting ready to tell your story. So let's say that Karen decides she wants to start a nonprofit saving uh, baby whales. People do that. She wants to save baby whales. So she decides she wants to go out to the ocean and she walks around. She starts doing lives and say, hey, you guys, in another couple of months, I'm going to start a nonprofit. In my nonprofit, we're going to be saving the whales. So she picks her area. So let's say she decides she wants to go to Hilton Head Island. Hopefully there's no whales in Hilton Head Island. But we'll say for this example that she goes to Hilton Head Island. So she goes out there. She does a couple of lives while she's out there. Uh, she gets some people from the wildlife preserve to bring some baby whales or something just to show everybody what she's doing. Because, again, the objective is to tell a story that people will be vested in and want to buy into. Because remember, with your ministry or your nonprofit, at some point you're going to have to ask for money. And if people have seen your journey and you have documented your journey, they're already vested so that when you say, hey, we're doing this great fundraiser, we need investors, people will start to give because they've seen what you've been doing on social media. So remember, you want to make sure that you tell a story. And lastly, you want to be consistent. I cannot stress this enough. The easiest thing to do with social media is to get yourself into a routine. Case in point with me in the leadership blend. Every morning when I get up, I usually do one post that she was either talking about the TV show or either talking about the radio show, telling people to tune in. So you want to make sure that you're on that kind of routine. When I'm done with the radio show, I usually go ahead and post everything, change out all my social media and change out my websites and go ahead and put up the new YouTube video for that day. I have myself set in a routine. So there is no time when you go to any of my social media, you haven't seen posts for three months. That is a no-no. Okay, so the biggest misconception about social media, particularly for people that are in nonprofit or church arenas, is, oh, I'll just randomly post stuff and we'll be good. No, that is the biggest misconception. Again, you have to tell a story and you have to build an audience. And by telling a story is how you build an audience. Again, you want to get the audience so vested in what you're doing that not only do they want it's a call to action, but they're going to want to do something. They're going to want to send money or they're going to want to volunteer, especially for you guys that have a nonprofit. Your biggest thing is going to be getting money and getting volunteers because a lot of times nonprofits who don't write grants or get a lot of money, which is not very many of them, they have to come up with their resources on their own. And they have to come up with the manpower on their own because even if you do write a grant, and I'm going to throw this out there again, if you write a grant, the likelihood of you getting 100% of what you're asking for is not very high. There is a measurement that the government is going to use. They're going to look at how much you say you're going to generate from your programs and your services. And then they're going to look at how much you're asking for. And they'll get, meet you somewhere in the middle. So people think, oh, I'll just write a grant and, and it'll be great. We'll get the money. That is not how that works. They always look at how much you generate from your programs and your services. So as a segue, also, while we're talking about it, Budgets. You want to start looking at a budget, even for your ministry. You want to look at a budget. What do you need? What are your expenditures? What is going to be your revenue? Tithes and offerings are great, and they are definitely a necessity for your church. But other things, what are you going to do? And as I said before, when it comes to pastors and leaders, writing books and things of that magnitude, create your LLC so that all that money can go there and let the church run itself. Now, of course, you can blend it, but it's easier. I'm finding that people who do LLCs make life a little easier when it comes to ministry. But again, make sure, tell the story, be consistent, build the audience. Telling your story will build your audience. So again, when it comes to being consistent, you want to get yourself into a routine so that people can expect, hey, 
I'll, we'll use Sunday mornings. So if you have a ministry Sunday mornings, you definitely want to make sure that your media ministry is recording your your services so that people can come around every Sunday and say, hey, if I go to Ricardo's page, I know he's recording his services. If I don't go to church today, I can always go to Ricardo's page to look at his ministry. You want people in that mindset that you're so consistent that if people need something, particularly in ministry, they can go to your page and find what they need. So again, final three, build an audience, tell a story, be consistent. So we went over a lot of things today. We went back over the idea checklist. So you definitely want to make sure that you have a good idea on the for-profit side and on the non-profit side or the ministry side. You want to make sure that what God has given you, especially if it's a vision, that you understand the vision, that you're ready to execute the vision. We also went over social media, the giant that has it has become. So remember, Facebook, social, Twitter, business, LinkedIn, professional, and IG or Instagram pictures. And remember your four points. Now, before I get into that, one thing I did leave off about uh, when we're talking about building stories and getting people invested, hashtags. So in order to create a hashtag, you want to put the number sign, which is the two lines and two things across it. And you want to put something that revolves around what you're doing. So when I put up uh, videos of this actual show, the Leadership Blinch TV show, then I put in hashtag something like uh, hashtag TV, hashtag ministry. So you want to pick words that revolve around whatever it is you're trying to do. There's nothing worse than you hashtagging something that does not belong in a hashtag. So when you say when I say the word hashtag, think of a hashtag like a catalog. So if somebody says, I'm trying to buy a car. So they'll think, okay, well, let me try hashtag buy a car. So they'll type in hashtag buy a card and everything that's been hashtagged like that will show up. So that's how you want to think about what a hashtag is. It shows up everything that's related to whatever the hashtag says. So you want to keep that in mind. You can also create your own hashtag. I created my own hashtag that says the leadership blend. So everything, all things leadership go, all things leadership blend go under that hashtag. So if I say, hey, check out my hashtag, they type in hashtag leadership blend. People go in it. They see everything that I've done as it pertains to the leadership blend. All right. Keep your post positive, especially if you're in ministry. Be mindful because you never know who's going to run across your post, especially when we're talking about dealing with hashtags. There's no select group that's going to come across your hashtag. So you want to be mindful of what you put. And remember this. It doesn't matter if you delete something. Nothing's ever deleted on the Internet. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Nothing's ever deleted on the Internet. So if you post something, even if you delete it, somebody probably took a picture of it. Somebody may have commented on it. Somebody can find it. So always keep that in mind. Never put anything up that you don't want anybody to see because it's never fully deleted. And remember, tell a story with your social media. Don't just put up random posts. Tell a story. Build your audience. If you tell a good story, you'll build a good audience. And lastly, be consistent. Never just post random stuff on Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter. Always be consistent. You want your base to always depend on you for good content. That's another thing. Make sure that you're building content. At any given time, if you were to check my social media, you will see me directing people to either the TV show, the radio show, my book, uh, the website. There's always some place you want to send people. So in actuality, what you really need to do is build your content first. I should have said that. That's my bad. You want to build your content because with social media, you always want to be sending people somewhere or you always want to give a call to action. So when you post a picture on your Instagram of you guys feeding the hungry or whatever the case may be, then you want to say, hey, check out our footage on our website. Or, you know, when you guys write books, you want to be able to put up a picture of the book and say, hey, go to the Amazon.com and purchase the book. So you always want to be able to send somebody somewhere with your social media. Remember, it's easy. Well, okay, I won't say it's easy. It's, uh, it's not hard. It's not hard. It's free. And the only swap off for money is time. And most people usually fall under because they don't invest the time in social media. But remember, anything that's free is technically probably not free. So with social media, it's free, but it requires a lot of time. But if you can get into a routine, it will not be that hard. So again, remember, tell a story. 
build an audience, and be consistent. Because if you do, social media will be a breeze. And again, social media will help you build your ministry, your organization, your nonprofit, all that good stuff. Because I can assure you, if you do not take the time to master social media, you're going to be doomed in the water before you even get started. God is great and God is good, but there is work we have to put in to make sure that the vision comes to pass. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is to build that audience and to tell that story. And sometimes that story is you. Sometimes people want to know where you've been, what you've done, what you've been through, because it'll help somebody else. And the best way to do that is to definitely use social media to help you tell that story so that the masses will be able to come to your page, relate to you, and hopefully have a call to action where they'll want to give to your ministry, they'll want to support your ministry, they'll want to show up in your ministry. All right? So as usual, the easiest way to get in touch with me, ricecommunity.com, rice with a W, so W-R-I-C-E. On Facebook, Ricardo Ricky Rice. On LinkedIn, Ricardo D. Rice. On Instagram, R. D. Rice. To see any of this, whether it be the radio show or the TV show, you're going to go to YouTube and type in the Leadership Blend. Both of them should come up. So one of them will say the Leadership Blend television show. The other one will just say the Leadership Blend. Remember, on Mondays and Fridays, I have a radio show on IBNX Radio Network called The Leadership Blend, ironically. And it airs from 12 to 2 p.m. on IBNX Radio Network. You can hear it on TuneIn. Or if you forget all of this, which people are prone to do, again, ricecommunity.com. That's W-R-I-C-E, community.com. And I will see you guys on next week on another episode of The Leadership Blend television show.